Hello! Today we're going to be doing a video of assembling the new Shopmaster 2x72 inch belt grinder. Uh, thank you to anyone who has uh, purchased one of these or is looking at purchasing one. I really appreciate it. Um, because of you, I can do what I enjoy doing and um, you get a great belt grinder. Thank you. So we'll have a look. I have a belt grinder disassembled here as you would receive it and we'll go through assembling it. Okay, first thing we need to do is take our sides. If you've purchased a stand to go with your grinder, I would suggest bolting the stand onto it right now before you make it any heavier. The stand is simply bolted on using the four holes in the middle here with the fasteners supplied in the kit of bag of fasteners that came with the stand. Um, you'll need a 16mm spanner and a 8mm allen key. Put the four bolts in and that way your stand will hold your grinder body while you assemble it. If you have not bought a stand, I would suggest taking a small clamp or a large clamp and clamping the grinder body firmly onto the bench so that it cannot move or fall on you as you work on it. In your grinder you will have three bags or fasteners, or snack packs as we call them. <laughs> one for the platen, one for the body and one for the tension arm. We'll start with the body. And you'll find all the fasteners you require to put the body together. Now the first thing we'll do is take the M8x60mm fasteners and put all nine of them through the frame from the right hand side. It's then quite easy to take the three shelves I said it was quite easy, I made a mess of that, and slide them onto the fasteners. There's no right way, front, back, up, down, it doesn't matter, just put them on whichever way you like. And then we have the left hand side of the grinder. I would suggest that you put the gas strut on the left hand side of the grinder before you assemble it. Before doing that, you get your gas strut, you may find that the ends are aligned or like that. You will need to rotate it clockwise so that the ends don't unscrew, so that the ends are 180 degrees from each other, and screw the shiny end, the piston end, into the side of the grinder. You will need a 12 millimeter spanner to tighten that up. And smaller fingers than mine would make it easier. All right. Once that's in, you can line up the bolts and start all of those off in there. And then I get the feeling there's going to be some editing of me not doing all these up. Um, you'll need a 13mm spanner to do them up, or if you're lazy like me, a 13mm in your cordless drill. Done. Easy. Right. Onto this side, you'll have two locking handles in the pack of fasteners for the body. There you go, in there, and I'm feeling the inside just to make sure I don't go through so there's not a problem getting the arms in. Now we need to put the tension arm on, or more importantly, the spacer, and the left hand side that the tension arm pivots on. There are two M10 by 35 bolts in the fastener pack, which can go through the holes, and then Again, doesn't matter which way up you put this, up, down, left, right. 
baser goes on and again with the side doesn't matter which way you put it it is symmetrical and just do those up so it's still a bit loose they'll then be in the pack an M12 by 50 and an M12 nylock and also two acetyl spacers. I believe the acetyl spacers are actually in the tension arm packet. Yes, they are. So you'll need to get those out of the tension arm packet and you'll need the tension arm. So the tension arm goes this way up. We put the bolt through the hole, the spacer on, sit the tension arm in there, put the bolt through it so it should just sit there. And then the second spacer, bolt through, and nut on the other side. Now, when you do up this nut, you will need a 19mm spanner for the nut, and thanks to the ridiculous metric system, an 18mm spanner for the bolt. I don't know why they make bolts with 18s and 16s now, but they do. And you want to do this up tight enough so that the arm will hold its own weight, it won't just fall down but obviously not so tight that it's hard to move about that's right and once that's done 16 mil spanner just to nip up these two yeah. all right now we've done that we can put the tracking mechanism in here and the tracking mechanism will be in the bag with the tension arm parts. It's already pre-assembled and pre-tensioned so it goes in the center hole and simply thread it in until you hit one more. So we're now touching here so that we can put the bolts in from the other side. Now when we put the bolts in from the other side, they are the M6 by 20 bolts in with the um, tension arm fastener pack, and they put the guard on as well. So we can take our guard and our bolts and put those in there. We'll need a 5mm Allen key and there we go once that's done we can put the gastra in it's very difficult from this side if you're finding it's not going in properly you might just need to tap the tension arm up or down. Once you get it lined up, it should just screw in perfectly. Again, 12mm spanner just to do that up. We need the 8mm nut. Pop that on the tracking mechanism thread there. And then the knob. And you bottom the knob out on the thread. And then a 13mm spanner and lock up against the knob and there's your tracking. Okay, we now need to put the tension arm handle on. The last, should be the last thing in the fastener pack for the tension arm. Little M10 by 20 bolt. Bolt goes through from the right hand side. 8mm Allen key. And there we are. Right. And the other thing we need to do is put the tracking wheel on. The tracking wheel is stored on the platen uh, simply because it screws into the hole for the 5 inch wheel and it was a nice secure way of transporting it. So to take that off, it has a washer with it. Bearings installed, cross tube installed, wave washer installed, 
Um, there is a line of flash down the middle of the wheel. Um, that will not affect anything. It will wear off quite quickly when you start using it. Um, being so thin, it is incredibly hard to trim off. So uh, it's just easier just to let it wear off in the first couple of minutes of use. So with the washer on, simply screw it into there. And 10 mil Allen key, firm it up. And that's your tracking wheel. That section is now all done. Um, we now need to bolt the motor on and the drive wheel. So depending on what sort of motor you've got, um, an Invitec or a Tico, uh, your motor flange will look something like that. This one's a Tico, a Tico motor. And you should simply be able to line it up sitting on the bench, pop it through the hole and there will be four M8 fasteners you can use to bolt it on. Now with the Invitec drive you can position the controller so it faces you at 45 degrees so it's easier to get to. Four of those bolts, six mil allen key and simply do those guys up Nice and firmly. And then the drive wheel. Line up the key and that should just slide on. And there's one last pair of fasteners should be in the one last fastener and washer in the body fastener pack. And again, six mil Allen key and do that up until it's nice and firm. There we go, and we have the drive wheel. Again, there is a line of flash in the center of the drive wheel. Again, it will wear off very quickly when you start using it. Right, okay, now that's all done, we need to assemble the platen. So we have the tooling arm in the platen fastener pack. You'll find the locking handle and an M10 washer to go into the tooling arm. Now remember with all your handles you can pull them out and rotate the handle to wherever you like and it'll click back in and that way you can move the handle out of the way. So I'm going to put that in the grinder for the time being now with the platen. It already has the 3 inch and 2 inch wheels installed on it. If you do wish to take them off to paint the platen um, which is a good point. If you do wish to paint the grinder, you, of course you can do so before you assemble it. Um, give it a good wash down with some mineral turps or some wax and grease remover and paint it whatever colour you like. I don't mind whether it's lime green, hot pink, black, yellow, orange, rainbow. Paint it whatever colour you like. I'd love to see some photos of some funky, wildly painted grinders. Um, but just make sure you give it a wash down with turps or, or wax and grease remover first um, and then you can go through and paint everything. Um, but the two and three inch wheels are installed and you can simply remove those. There's a washer in there as well. Keep it all assembled um, with, the with the bearings and the crush tubes and everything and you won't have an issue there. So moving on, we need to put the platen on the front of the platen support and the spigot. So to do that we take the platen and the two platen brackets from the fastener pack and we have there were four M6 by 16 screws and washers which I've just put the washers on the screws and we need one there and there and then one and go into each M6 hole in the platen support, like so. You can take 5mm Allen key and just do these up finger tight for now. And pick the platen up, give it a shake so the washers, oop, so the washers fall down and slip that over like so. Um, now to align the platen with the wheels, we actually want it to be ever so slightly um, in front of the wheels. So I would suggest 
some mail. It's probably a good thickness. I use a half mil shim normally when I do this, but a letter will work quite nicely. Hold the wheel down, hold the platen down, and do up the bolt. And my phone rings. Okay, so once we've done one side up, put the shim in the other side, just under the wheel. Hold the wheel down, hold the platen down, and we can do do that one up nice and firmly. All right, and then you'll find that the wheels are free spinning on the bench. Obviously you need a nice flat bench too to do that. Um, and then to do the other way, we need a straight edge or often I just use the edge of the bench um, to line up the platen with the wheels in the other direction. Like so. And that way our platen is lined up with our wheels, it's flush down the side, it's just sitting slightly proud of the wheels, which is what we want. We then need to install the spigot which holds it into the arm. So there's a M M10 by 25 socket head that goes into that. Now, I would highly suggest if you have an impact driver to do this up with an impact driver as tight as you possibly can. Um, there's nothing worse than this being not tight enough and coming loose in use. Um, I'd also suggest you put Loctite in it too. That's what we do with the uh, Shopmate grinders. We use the impact wrench and Loctite them so there's no way they can come out. Otherwise, ugh, get it as tight as you can without busting the bolt. But I really, even a bit of super glue in there is better than, better than nothing. But Loctite if you've got it. You then have the stop collar, which can be placed on there for now. And then that can go into the grinder, like so. We'll do that arm up. And when we rotate this around, we want to make sure that the, if you can see, the in here, the platen support clears the heads of the bolts by approximately one millimeter. And if you do that, and then lock that off, take a two and a half mil Allen key, slide the stop collar over to the arm, and just nip that up. That should be the correct alignment. So when we bring our rest in, it'll be centered on the rest, and we're also centered on the other wheels. So we'll just pop our rest in here. We'll see that it's nicely centered. Um, as a rough guide, the back of this arm should be flush with the back of the shelves, and that should mean that you're set up ready to put a belt on. Um, as far as tension goes, if you have the tension arm close to the top, you'll have nice strong tension. The further down you go, the weaker the belt tension will get until it stays down. So there we go, we now have a completely assembled grinder, ready to go. Um, if you purchased a five inch wheel as an accessory, that simply bolts on here. Uh, it comes with a washer, just like the tracking wheel, and will bolt straight on and gives you those slack belts um, and the five inch wheel to use as well. Um, otherwise, it should be all ready to go. If you do have any queries, please don't hesitate to contact um, the place of purchase. And once again, thank you for interest in my products and hopefully purchasing, purchasing a grinder. I really do appreciate it. Happy grinding.